Hello everyone. I am Dr. Kishore Kumar. I am working as a kidney transplant specialist and nephrologist at Peace Hospitals, Hightech City. Uh, today, I will be discussing about a condition called as membranous nephropathy, which affects our kidneys. So, what is membranous nephropathy? So, before knowing about membranous nephropathy, we need to know the functions of our kidney. So, we have two kidneys in our body. Uh, which help in filtering the blood and producing the urine. So, via this urine, all the waste products which are present in our body are sent out and excess water from our body is also sent out. So, while filtering the blood, the kidneys send out only the waste products and excess water and electrolytes from the body, but they retain proteins in the blood like the albumin and many other proteins like antibodies, all these which are required for our body. So, this filtering is done by something called as nephrons in our kidney. Each kidney has 10 lakh units called as nephrons and there is a part of nephron called as glomerulus which is a small globular structure in which the main process of filtering takes place. If we see the structure of this glomerulus, inside this glomerulus there is a barrier like uh, example like a tea filter. So, this barrier will filter the blood and the urine is produced. So, the blood will come to this barrier and all the excess waste products which are present in the blood and the excess water will get filtered and uh, remaining blood will be returned to the body. So, this barrier is called as glomerular filtration barrier and one of the part of this barrier is the glomerular filtration membrane. So, in this condition which is called as membranous nephropathy, this glomerular filtration barrier especially the membrane part of this barrier will get thickened. This is because of the deposition of some proteins in that barrier. So, this is the membranous nephropathy. As this membrane or the barrier gets thickened, this will lead to the loss of function of this barrier so that the protein retaining function of the barrier is lost and the protein is lost in the urine. So, this will lead to excess loss of protein in the urine. So, this is the membranous nephropathy. Now, we will see about the types of membranous nephropathy and what causes membranous nephropathy. So, there are two types of membranous nephropathy. The first one is primary membranous nephropathy. The second one is the secondary membranous nephropathy. In the primary, nephro primary membranous nephropathy, the cause is not known. We do not know the cause of membranous nephropathy, what is causing this condition. And it is the major type of membranous nephropathy, which means the seven, around 70% of the cases are primary membranous nephropathy where we do not know the cause. So, but there are recent advancements in the last decade to understand this primary membranous nephropathy. And research has identified some of the antigens. The one of the antigen is phospholipase A2 receptor antigen. So, this antigen is normally present in that glomerular filtration barrier in our kidneys. So, not, uh, in patients who are having this primary membranous nephropathy, the immune system, the body immune system will produce an antibody against that antigen like the phospholipase A2 receptor antibody and this antibody will go and bind to that antigen in the kidney and it will lead to damage of that barrier. So, basically it is because of an antibody which is binding to an antigen in the kidneys causing the damage inside the kidney. So, whenever we tell antibody, it is a part of immune system which helps in fighting all the bacteria, viruses or the infections which uh, we are exposed to. So, here the, anti the immune system is attacking our own body. So, it is an abnormal immune response of our own body against our own organ. So, this is the primary membranous nephropathy. So, PLA2R which I have told the phospholipase A2 receptor is one antigen. In recent last 3-4 years, many such new antigens are being identified which will which are helping in identifying or uh, increasing the understanding of this condition. Now, coming to the secondary membranous nephropathy. In the secondary membranous nephropathy, uh, patient 
will be suffering from some other condition or patient may be taking some other medications or he may be having some other infections because of which they have membranous nephropathy. For example, patient may be taking some medications like painkillers like NSAIDs like ibuprofen or uh, diclofenac because of these medications patient can develop membranous nephropathy or sometimes patient may be suffering from infections like hepatitis B or hepatitis C infections these patients are also at risk of developing membranous nephropathy uh, sometimes there may be cancer in the patients cancer can all stands patients who are suffering from cancer can also develop membranous nephropathy and sometimes other autoimmune diseases like lupus so these uh, patients who are having autoimmune diseases can also develop membranous nephropathy and lastly one important thing is about the exposure to chemicals the most important example is mercury exposure so this mercury can be present in uh, non-branded fairness creams and sometimes in branded fairness creams also this mercury exposure through the skin can lead to excess levels of mercury in the blood and this can lead to membranous nephropathy. Sometimes this heavy metal uh, uh, contamination can happen in alternative medications uh, like Ayurvedic or homeopathic or uh, some other medications because of the contamination and that can also lead to increased levels of these uh, chemicals in the blood, uh, especially mercury and that can lead to membranous nephropathy. So this point we should keep in mind especially when we are using the non-branded forms of fairness creams uh, where the composition is not known and they specifically mention on the label that there are no side effects but we do not know the composition what is the chemical uh, composition of that specific cream the symptoms of membranous nephropathy so what are the symptoms of membranous nephropathy so as i have mentioned membranous nephropathy is a condition where there is loss of protein in the urine because there is a damage in the filtration barrier so if the protein loss is more this will lead to less protein in the blood so albumin which is present in the blood it will become less and because of this low blood albumin in the blood, which is also called as hypoalbuminemia, patient can develop swelling in the body. It can be, the swelling can be present in the legs or it can be face or it can be in the whole body, which we call as anasarta. And the other symptom is patient will have frothing in the urine because of the protein loss. They may have or may not have. Uh, the third symptom is the patient will have increased weight gain. This is because of excess water accumulation in the body and they will also have fatigue and weakness and sometimes they may have high blood pressure because of the kidney problem and also excess water retention in the body. So these are the common symptoms of excess protein loss in the uh, urine which can be because of membranous nephropathy. Rarely patients can have decreased urine output also in patients who are having advanced kidney damage due to membranous nephropathy. What are the complications of membranous nephropathy? So if we don't treat membranous nephropathy, there are some important complications which the patient can land into. The first one is severe nephrotic syndrome. Severe nephrotic syndrome means the patient will have very severe loss of protein in the urine which can lead to excess weight gain, excess swelling of the body that can lead, that can impair their day-to-day -day, uh, activities and it can also lead to increased risk of infection or kidney damage. This is the severe nephrotic syndrome. The other thing is because of this membranous nephropathy, there may be a risk of permanent kidney failure if the condition is not treated. The third important risk is membranous nephropathy can lead to development of high blood pressure. The fourth important risk is there is something called as that the risk of blood clotting because of the excess loss of albumin in the urine and also increased uh, levels of clotting factors in the blood. These patients are at high risk of blood clotting. The blood clot may be in the leg, which can lead to deep venous thrombosis and suddenly the leg may get swollen with uh, severe, severe pain. And these clots, which are formed in the legs, sometimes can travel from the legs to the heart and it can block the uh, 
uh, blood supply to the lungs also and this is a potentially fatal or severe life threatening condition called as pulmonary embolism sometimes the clotting can happen in the blood vessels of the kidneys also so this is a severe complication which can happen with membranous nephropathy who are having very severe forms of membranous nephropathy with excessive protein loss in the urine what are the ways to diagnose this membranous nephropathy so as i have already told these patients usually present with swelling of the body and when we investigate these patients we do complete urine examination which shows heavy protein loss protein loss in the urine and sometimes there may be blood loss in the urine which may be microscopic the second one is we do kidney function testing majority of the patients usually will have in early stages normal kidney function which means that their creatinine levels will be normal but some patients can have high creatinine levels also but the point which we need to remember is if we don't treat these patients the creatinine levels will gradually increase over months or years and ultimately the patient will land up in kidney failure the third one is we do an ultrasound examination to identify whether the kidneys are in normal position shape and whether there are any infections and side by side any pa in, in these patients till these levels of investigations like complete urine examination kidney function and ultrasound we identify that patient is low is heavy protein in the urine but we don't know what is the cause we, we are still uh, we have not yet identified that the membranous nephropathy is the cause of this condition so what we do is we try to do other investigations like whether the patient is suffering from any viral infections or we'll do hepatitis b c or hiv serology along with that we do some autoimmune marker testing and we finally do kidney biopsy so kidney biopsy will help in identification of the specific pathological process which is going on and it will give the confirmatory diagnosis so the kidney biopsy will tell that patient is having membranous nephropathy and there are some special stains inside the kidney which will help in identifying the antigen which i have already told the phospholipase a2 receptor antigen so if the staining of that antigen is positive then we diagnose it as primary membranous nephropathy and treat accordingly but if the staining of the kidney biopsy is negative then we need to identify the cause like secondary membranous nephropathy like it may be because of infection or it may be because of mercury or it can be because of drugs or cancer or autoimmune condition so we need to identify what underlying condition the patient is suffering from which has led to membranous nephropathy so you may ask me can uh, can't we diagnose membranous nephropathy without biopsy yes we can diagnose membranous nephropathy without biopsy in specific uh, in a specific situation like uh if a patient is having heavy protein loss in the urine and if their kidney function is normal and if we measure the levels of the antibody the antibody against that phospholipase a2 receptor if it is high then we can diagnose membranous nephropathy without doing a kidney biopsy so this is the way which we uh, diagnose the membranous nephropathy if we take the treatment of membranous nephropathy in any patient who is suffering from nephrotic syndrome or protein loss in the urine we usually advise them initial lifestyle modifications the lifestyle modifications which we advise them is to restrict the salt to less than 5 grams per day avoid smoking and avoid excess protein intake and along with that we ask them to be as much as active as much active as possible so after doing these lifestyle modifications we also start them on some medications to decrease the protein in the urine so the medications to decrease in the protein are of two types one type of medications are non immunosuppressives which means that they do not suppress our immunity the other one the other type are the drugs which will suppress our immunity or decrease our immunity so the first type of medications which we give them are angiotensin receptor blockers or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors these drugs will decrease the protein in the urine along with that the patients who are having severe protein loss in the urine they also have high cholesterol levels so we give them cholesterol lowering medications like statins or some other medications uh, to decrease the cholesterol levels in the blood 
So these are the general measures which we advise uh, the patients with membranous nephropathy. After uh, doing these general uh, measures, we classify the patients based on the protein loss in the urine and their risk factors into mild, moderate or high risk patients. So patients under the high risk category are right away treated with immunosuppressive medications. So who are the high risk patients? High risk patients are the patients who have developed the blood clots in their legs or they are having severe nephrotic syndrome severe nephrotic syndrome on the patients who are having high creatinine value. So these are the group of patients in whom we give the immunity decreasing medications right away. In the other groups of patients for the first six, three to six months, we will give the routine protein lowering medications like angiotensin receptor blockers and we observe them. If their protein levels are decreasing, we continue the medications. But if their protein levels are not decreasing or they are in the increasing trend, then we go towards this immunity decreasing medications uh, or immunosuppressive medications. So what are these immunosuppressive medications which we can give to these patients? The first one which we can give to them are the examples are the rituximab or we can also give them steroids along with cyclophosphamide. These are the medications which suppress the immunity in the body and they will also decrease the production of the antibodies. So the reason for giving these medications is to suppress the or decrease the production of antibodies so that less antibodies and less deposition in the kidney and recovery of the kidney. So this is about the treatment of membranous nephropathy. So what is the prognosis of patients with membranous nephropathy? So what can happen to them if we treat or if we don't treat? So some patients, even if we don't treat, their protein, lo uh, protein loss in the urine will go away and they will recover. Few of the patients I have already told, if they are not treated, they will end up in kidney failure. And few of the patients can respond to these medications and their kidney function will be maintained. So if we decrease the protein loss in the urine, their kidney function will be maintained. So our main aim of treatment of these patients is to decrease the protein loss in the urine as much as possible so that the kidney function will be maintained for longer duration or for the following years or decades. So in patients whom, in whom we cannot control the protein loss with one medication, we change over to the other medications and see whether that protein will be decreased or not. So this is about the prognosis of patients who can land up in kidney failure if not treated. So basically this is a non-curable disease which means that there is no cure for this condition but we can only control the condition by medications and lifestyle modifications.